we're on the hunt for all functions from the positive integers to the positive integers that satisfy two very specific and unusual conditions. First, the function of a factorial must equal the factorial of the function's value. Second, the difference between any two inputs, m and n, must divide the difference of their outputs. This condition is a powerful constraint on the function's growth. The factorial condition is the easiest entry point. Let's see what happens when we plug in the smallest possible input. We have this first condition. Let's set an equal to 1. This gives us the function of 1 factorial equals the factorial of the function of 1. Of course, 1 factorial is just 1. So the value of f of 1 must be a number that is equal to its own factorial. Since the function maps to positive integers, we are looking for positive integers k, such that k equals k factorial. The only positive integers that satisfy this property are 1 and 2. This is a major breakthrough. The value of the function at 1 is restricted to just two possibilities. This gives us a clear path forward. We'll investigate each case separately. Let's start by exploring the case where f of 1 equals 1. We will use the second condition. Let's fix into b1. This tells us that m minus 1 must divide f of m minus f of 1 for any m. Since we are in the case where f of 1 is 1, we can substitute that in. So, for any integer m greater than 1, m minus 1 divides f of m minus 1. Just as we did for f of 1, the factorial condition on n equals 2 implies that f of 2 must be either 1 or 2. This splits our investigation again into two subcases. Let's first assume that f of 2 is also 1. The simplest function that satisfies f of 1 equals 1 and f of 2 equals 1 is the constant function f of x equals 1. Let's verify if it's a valid solution. The first condition holds since both sides evaluate to 1. The second condition also holds because m minus n always divides 0. So f of x equals 1 is our first solution. Now for the second subcase where f of 1 is 1 and f of 2 is 2. The simplest function that fits these values is the identity function, f of x equals x. Let's check it. The first condition holds as both sides are n factorial. The second condition holds as m minus n clearly divides itself. This gives us our second solution. But this feels a little too easy. Could there be some other, more complicated function that also starts with f of 1 equals 1 and f of 2 equals 2? We must prove that no other function exists. From the divisibility conditions, we have that f of n is congruent to 1 modulo n minus 1 and congruent to 2 modulo n minus 2. Since consecutive integers in minus 1 and in minus 2 are coprime, the Chinese remainder theorem applies. This gives us a parametric form f of n equals n plus some integer t sub n times the product n minus 1 times n minus 2. Note that t sub n may depend on n. To show that the identity function is the unique solution, we'll prove that the parameter t must be 0 using strong induction. For the base case n equals 3, we use the divisibility condition with m equals 6 and k equals 2. This gives us that 4 divides f of 3 factorial minus 2, which equals f of 3 factorial minus 2. If f of 3 is at least 4, then f of 3 factorial is divisible by 4. But then f of 3 factorial minus 2 is congruent to negative 2 mod 4, which is not 0. This contradicts our divisibility requirement. Since f of 3 is odd from our congruence conditions and less than 4, it must be either 1 or 3. From our parametric form, f of 3 equals 3 plus 2 times t sub 3. If t sub 3 is not 0, then f of 3 is either at least 5 or at most 1. But this would require f of 3 to be 1. This gives t sub 3 equals negative 1, confirming f of 3 equals 1. 
However, checking our divisibility condition, 1 factorial minus 2 equals negative 1, which is not divisible by 4. This contradicts our requirement. Therefore, t sub 3 must be 0, and f of 3 equals 3. Our base case is established. For the inductive step, assume f of k equals k for all, k less than n, where n is at least 4. For each r from 1 to n minus 1, we apply the divisibility condition with m equals n factorial and n equals r. This gives us that n factorial minus r divides f of n factorial minus r. Suppose the sub n is not 0. Then f of n has the form n plus t sub n times the product. Since the product is at least 6 for n at least 4, the deviation of f of n from n is at least 6. If t sub n is positive, then f of n is at least n plus 6, making its factorial enormous. The factorial of n plus 6 is at least 64 times n factorial. This makes f of n factorial minus n factorial much larger than the product of all divisibility constraints, creating a contradiction. If t sub n is negative, we use a modular argument with r equals 2. We have n factorial minus 2 divides f of n factorial minus 2, and n factorial is divisible by n minus 2. If f of n is much smaller than n, then its factorial is vastly smaller than n factorial. This makes f of n factorial minus 2 negative, which cannot be divisible by the positive number n factorial minus 2. Therefore, t sub n must be 0 for all n, confirming that f of n equals n is the unique solution in this case. Now we move to the second major branch of our investigation, where f of 1 equals 2. Using the same logic as before, the divisibility condition tells us that m minus 1 must divide f of m minus 2. And f of 2 must still be either 1 or 2. First, let's explore what happens if f of 2 is 1. From the divisibility conditions, f of n is congruent to 2 modulo n minus 1, and congruent to 1 modulo n minus 2. The Chinese remainder theorem gives us the parametric form. f of n equals 3 minus n plus some integer e's times the product. For n equals 3, this gives f of 3 equals 2 times s sub 3. Since f of 3 must be a positive integer, we need s sub 3 to be at least 1. Now we apply the divisibility condition with m equals 6 and k equals 1. This gives us that 5 divides f of 3 factorial minus 2. If s sub 3 equals 1, then f of 3 is 2, so f of 3 factorial is 2. This gives 0 and 5 divides 0, so this case might work so far. However, let's check n equals 4. We get f of 4 equals negative 1 plus 6 times s s sub 4. Since f of 4 must be positive, s sub 4 is at least 1, making f of 4 at least 5. Now apply divisibility with em equals 24 and k equals 3. This requires 21 to divide f of 4 factorial minus 2. Since 21 equals 3 times 7, we need both 3 and 7 to divide f of 4 factorial minus 2. For any value f of 4 at least 5, the factorial is at least 120, which is divisible by 3. But then f of 4 factorial minus 2 is congruent to 1 modulo 3, never 0. This violates our divisibility requirement. Since any choice of s sub 4 at least 1 gives f of 4 at least 5, every possible function in this parametric family fails the modular constraint. Therefore, there is no function mapping to positive integers that satisfies both conditions in this subcase. This leaves only one possibility, f of 1 equals 2 and f of 2 equals 2. The obvious candidate is the constant function f of x equals 2. Checking the factorial condition, both sides are 2. Checking the divisibility condition, m minus n divides 0. Both conditions are satisfied, so f of x equals 2 is our third solution. Once again, we must ask, could there be another solution? 
Could the function equal 2 for some values and something else for others? Let's prove this is impossible. Before proceeding with induction, we must establish the base case that f of 3 equals 2. We use the divisibility condition with m equals 6 and n equals 2. This gives us that 4 divides f of 3 factorial minus 2. We also use the condition with m equals 3 and n equals 1. This tells us that 2 divides f of 3 minus 2, so f of 3 is even. Since f of 3 is even if it's at least 4, then its factorial is at least 24, which is divisible by 4. But then f of 3 factorial minus 2 would not be divisible by 4, contradicting our requirement. Therefore, f of 3 must equal 2, the only even positive integer less than 4. Now we can prove that f of n must be 2 for all in using induction. For the inductive step, assume f of k equals 2 for all. k less than n, where n is at least 4. Our goal is to prove that f of n must also equal 2. We apply the divisibility condition with e m equals n factorial and k equals 3, noting that 3 is less than any. The condition states that n factorial minus 3 must divide f of n factorial minus f of 3. We can replace both terms. f of n factorial is f of n factorial. And since 3 is less than n, our hypothesis says f of 3 is 2. This gives us n factorial minus 3 divides f of n factorial minus 2. Here is the key insight. For n at least 4, n factorial contains both 2 and 3 as factors, so it's divisible by 3. Therefore, n factorial minus 3 is also divisible by 3. This implies that 3 must divide f of n factorial minus 2, or equivalently, f of n factorial is congruent to 2 modulo 3. Let's examine factorials modulo 3. 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, and for k at least 3, k factorial is 0 modulo 3. Since f of n factorial must be congruent to 2 modulo 3, and only 2 factorial has this property, we need f of n factorial to equal 2 factorial. This powerfully constrains f of n. It must be at most 2, so either 1 or 2. We are almost done. We know from the beginning of this case that n minus 1 must divide f of n minus 2. Let's test f of n equals 1. This would mean n minus 1 divides negative 1. This only works if n minus 1 is 1, which means n equals 2. But our argument was for n greater than or equal to 4. This is a contradiction. The possibility of f of n equals 1 is eliminated. The only remaining option is that f of n equals 2. Our induction is complete. Let's summarize our findings. After exploring every logical path, we've discovered that exactly three functions satisfy both original conditions. The constant function f of x equals 1. The constant function f of x equals 2. And the identity function f of x equals x. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more math content.